What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I am a third year medical student studying at King's College London. Uh, and some of you might know that I actually have a degree in biomedical science. Today is a Tuesday and I have a 3000 word essay to write. And because of that, I thought it would be a really good idea to take you guys through uh, how I write my essays. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the exact method that I use to write all of my essays in biomedical science. And it's also actually the exact same method that I use to write my first publication, which should be right there. And it's the exact same method that I used to write uh, my first publication and all of my essays, all of my assignments in medical school as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that I do when starting to write an essay is I open up two Microsoft Word documents. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, so here's the first document I have. Um, here's the second one as well. Um, the first document I'm going to name um, Essay Notes. So I'll just put that in the middle. Uh, essay Notes. And in the second word document, I want to call that um, essay. Okay, once I have that done, I then go on to start um, dividing my essay into the relevant parts. So I want to have um, an introduction. I'm going to have a, a main body um, and also a conclusion. And also at the end, I'm going to have my references. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to copy copy this format um, into my um, essay notes page. And I'll explain what this is in, in just a second. Okay, so the two pages I have, the first page is my essay notes page. The essay notes page is essentially where I want to put all of my notes. Um, so when I do some research and I find something interesting or something quite profound, which I think um, really needs to be in the essay, I'm going to come over here and then uh, copy that you know part of the text um, into this essay notes. Essentially what this is going to produce after a while is one huge document with all of the relevant information on the essay topic, which I think really, really needs to be um, included. And then the second document is going to be um, where I actually write the essay. Um, so I'll show you guys exactly how I write the essay later on using the essay notes. But as a summary, the essay notes page is to uh, collect all of the information that I need to write the essay. And the essay page is where I actually go on to write the essay itself. All right, so once that's done, um, it's time to start actually looking for information uh, which I'll need to produce this essay. So what you want to do is go to um, to PubMed. So if you go to Google and you type in um, PubMed, um, it's the first thing that comes up. I'm not entirely sure if you guys have heard this before, but essentially what PubMed is, is a database of um, all of the research papers currently um, out there right now. Um, so it's kind of like a Google, I guess you can say, for um, research papers. And the thing is, when you're writing essays in university, um, you don't want to use textbooks anymore. You don't want to use Wikipedia. You don't want to use websites anymore. Um, I remember the first essay that I ever wrote in university, I got 40% and the pass mark was 40%. So I just about passed. And the reason why I got 40% is I didn't use any research articles. I just used like literally um, like websites and books and stuff like that. But the thing with these and resources is that they're not up to date. And if you use something like PubMed, you get all of the research papers that are really up to date um, and from really good journals as well. Okay, so what you want to do is go to the search bar and type in whatever topic you're currently on. Uh, so for example, right now, my topic is on erectile dysfunction following prostatectomies. So I'm going to write the topic right here, erectile dysfunction, uh, prostatectomies prostatectomy. And then what it should do is give you a list of all of the research papers that are currently out there right now. It, as I said, it's very, very up to date. And what you want to do is come up here and click sort by, um, make sure that it's on best match. And then uh, what you also want to do is click free full text because obviously student budgets, um, I don't have a type of student loan to be paying for papers and paying to read papers. Okay, so what you want to do is go through, um, you know, all of these different papers, read the titles and see what is best to start on. What I do recommend to start on is to start by reading review papers. And then once you um, have a general idea of what the topic is through review papers, you wanna then go on to um, actually look at uh, clinical trials and primary papers. To kind of explain what these are, a review paper is basically um, a paper which was written by someone who didn't do any research themselves, they didn't do anything in the lab. So it's kind of like a summary of a topic and it's a really, really good way to get started when trying to you know, scope a topic and understand what is going on before you move on to the specific papers, uh, which will be the primary papers. The primary papers is different. So primary papers are novel things that people have done. So these are people who are in the labs doing research you know, on, you know, on the actual cells, doing experiments themselves, and they write this into a primary paper. So this is their own like unique work. This is all the um, you know, brand new work that they did themselves. 
um, which is what you want to go into later on once you have a good idea of um, the whole topic as a whole. So what you want to do is also start off by clicking review. As I said, all of these right here will be a review of the whole topic. So you want to spend um, maybe a couple of hours, maybe, you know, reading up to like, you know, five to 10 review papers. Um, so what I'll do, for example, is um, click click this uh, this first link because that sounds quite interesting and it sounds like it covers the topic that I want. You want to then try to get access to this paper. So click on um, the full text links over here in the corner. So I'll go ahead and click that. Once that's clicked, um, you should have the whole paper just right here uh, in front of you. Um, sometimes you don't, sometimes you need to do a bit of digging. Uh, it's fine paper, but normally it's quite easy to get the paper. And then what you want to do is download the PDF copy. Um, so you should go, so you should be able to find PDF somewhere. Normally it's in the top right corner here, um, but if it's not, you can just save it as a PDF yourself. What I'm going to do is make a new folder on my desktop. Um, I'm going to call this, um, let's say, uh, essay. Within the essay folder, I want to make a new folder called papers. So this is exactly where I'm going to store, uh, store all of my research papers. Everything that I read will be stored in this folder right here. And now what I do personally um, is to save it by number. Um, so I'll explain why later on why I do that, but I wanna start by calling it number one and I'll save it in there. So I should have it on my uh, desktop now. So I'm gonna open it up, go to papers, and there it is. That's my first research paper saved. Okay, so what you wanna do is, as I said, to find maybe five to 10 different uh, review articles and uh, start doing some research, start doing some reading. Um, what I tend to do now is to get the highlighter um, and go through the whole paper and you know highlight anything that I think is really important, something that I think definitely should be in the introduction, in the main body or the conclusion. So let's say I found this first um, this first paper right here, really, really intriguing, very, very profound. I think definitely has to be in there. What I'll do is I'll highlight it. And then once I go through the whole paper, you know, once I've read it and I've highlighted everything that I need to know, I then come back to the paper and uh, copy it. So I'll click copy text and I'll paste it into the essay notes document where, as I said, I'll have all of my research information that I think is very relevant. So I'll go, go in there and I'll paste it. Um, the annoying thing is that it kind of messes up the format. So you want to quickly just fix the format right here. Make sure it's in a bullet point. Um, and there we are. That's our first, um, you know, sort of information that we think will be really, really relevant for the introduction. What is really, really important as well is to make sure that you um, you remind yourself of where you got this information because once you have the whole um, you know essay notes completely done, you want to know where you got the information from because when you come back to referencing it and referencing where you got this information from, you're going to end up forgetting unless you have a method or a system to remember where you got it from. Uh, so I, what I do is I put in brackets the number. So as I told you before, I named the first document or the first paper by number. So the first one I named number one. So because I got this information from that paper, I'm going to come back here and put brackets one. So now, now I know straight away that this first bullet point came from, the, from that paper called number one. So when I, need, when I need to reference it later on, I can just come back to the paper and you know go back to the name of the paper and I know exactly where I got the information from. So you wanna do this for the introduction, for the main body and conclusion as well, um, to get more of an idea of what you wanna write about. Once this is all done, once this is all written up, then you start reading primary papers. So when you feel like you have like a good idea of you know what the topic is about, uh, of what you want to write, you want to come back over here and um, go back to where we started from. But instead of clicking a review, you want to remove the review and look for primary papers itself. You can you can either click clinical trial here or you can go through the papers just normally and look for whatever looks like a primary paper. So for the purposes right now, we're going to click clinical trial and we're going to start off by um, reading the titles and again looking for something that stands out looking for something that we think will be relevant for our study okay so as i said right now i want to find trials i want to find you know novel things in the field you know whenever you write a paper you want to have you know mo the most up-to-date information so sometimes it is relevant to go back maybe 50 years to get the information about you know how let's say um prostatectomy started for uh, erectile dysfunction so you want to start off by you know having a few old papers which maybe were the first papers ever written on this topic. Then you wanna move on to more recent topics. Um, and then in the main body, at least, you wanna start um, talking about um, the most latest information or the novel clinical trials, which we have right here. So again, what I'm gonna do is find a trial. This trial, number one, sounds quite relevant. So I'm gonna click on it. 
And what I'm gonna do is to do the exact same thing and save it as a PDF copy, go through the trial, um, take all the relevant information, uh, highlight it, and then copy it into the main body or the introduction. And, and that's the first step in getting what we want. So there are essentially two ways to find the most up-to-date uh, papers. The first is what I just mentioned. So, you know, going onto PubMed and searching for clinical trials or looking through um, the, the homepage and finding the most relevant information, which you think will be the primary papers. The second way of doing it is to uh, get these, these kind of primary papers from the actual review papers. So if we go back to the paper that I first started off with. So over here is the uh, review paper that we first started off with. And what you can kind of do is to kind of cheat and steal the papers that they reference themselves. So let's say I, um, I was reading this paper here and it became very obvious that, you know, this um, paragraph over here, over here was talking about a, a primary paper. Let's say that they were referencing like a clinical trial that, you know, that they think was really, really important to know about. What I want to do is then go to where they reference it themselves. So I'll click uh, on the number right here, so number 11, and that should take you to their references. Uh, and right here, it gives you the title of that primary paper that they're talking about. So it's a nice kind of little way to, um, to cheat and to go straight to the primary paper that they're talking about. As I said, because it is a review article, they should normally reference quite a few um, primary papers, which makes it a lot easier for you because they kind of do the hard work for you. They review papers kind of do all of the research for you and you can go and steal their clinical trials, steal the uh, primary papers that they talked about and then go uh, copy the title um, and head back to PubMed, open up a new PubMed screen and then copy the, copy the um, title that they have. And that should take you straight away um, to the primary paper Again, download it as a PDF, have a read of it, and see whether or not it's relevant to add to your essay. So let's say that all of the research is done. Uh, normally this takes me quite a few hours to get my essay notes completely um, you know, filled up to a level where I think that I'm ready to write the paper. Uh, but let's say that um, it's all done now. I'm gonna take you guys through to my essay notes that I've already done. Um, I started this a bit earlier on, so I already do have like quite a bit of essay notes already. So I want to open up my essay notes just now. Okay, so here we are. Um, so what I want to do straight away is open up my essay notes um, in combination with my uh, essay itself. This makes it very easy to have a look at um, what I've written in my essay notes and to rephrase this and you know write it in a way that makes sense into my introduction. Um, so it allows me to do uh, two things at the same time. It is quite uh, useful to have a secondary monitor. So as you can see over there, I normally work with my laptop straight onto my monitor. So I have my essay notes up on my screen and then on my laptop, I have my essay itself. Um, but for the purposes of this video, and also like if I'm in the library or if I'm somewhere without my screen, uh, this is exactly what I do. So what I want to do is to start writing the introduction itself. Um, so the thing is you want to make sure that you don't plagiarize. You know, plagiarism is a huge thing in university. So what you want to do is have a read of your essay notes. And as you're reading your essay notes, you want to rephrase it uh, and make it into your own words so it's not um, it's not taken out for copyright. So I'm just going to do that right here. So I want to write uh, prostate cancer is... Um, one of the most common malignancies uh, in males and is being diagnosed um, more than ever before. Okay, so this is just as a quick example. Okay, so let's say I've gone through um, and I've done this for the whole introduction. Um, let's just say that, you know, the introduction is completely written. What you want to do is as you're writing these, this introduction, you want to also start to, um, to reference. Um, it's a lot easier to reference as you go along um, because you know you, you, you know exactly where you're getting the papers from. Um, it saves a lot of time rather than coming back to the end and you know doing all your references uh, at once. So I want to show you guys now exactly how I do my references. What you want to do before you start is to talk to university and to make sure that you have the right essay, the right referencing style that they use. Um, so I normally tend to use Vancouver if they don't specify. A lot of the times in, in university, they will let you choose whatever you want. Um, and I highly recommend the Vancouver system. A lot of people use the Harvard system as well. But the thing, was the, the thing with the Harvard system is that I just don't find it as clean because the references are actually in your, um, in your writing. Uh, whereas in, in the Vancouver system, you use a number instead to reference. And also it kind of, um, it lowers your word, word count overall as well. Okay, so in, in order to reference, what you want to do is to make an account with um, RefWorks. 
There are loads of different referencing softwares out there. I just prefer to use RefWorks since what I've used uh, my whole life. So we're gonna go to RefWorks, uh, log into RefWorks. As you can see, RefWorks.com, um, make an account. I'm just gonna log in uh, straight away to my account. And then once you're logged into the website, um, you can see all um, these are all of my references I've used in the past. You wanna go back to your Microsoft Word document and log into RefWorks on the actual document. You do have to kind of install this as a plugin. You wanna make sure that you have RefWorks on your uh, Word. Um, I'm not gonna go through this right now. Go onto RefWorks and should have all of the information on there about how to do this. Okay, so once you make an account with RefWorks, RefWorks essentially what you want to do is to come into Microsoft Word, uh, click the Insert tab up here, and then click uh, Get Add-ins. And then what you want to do is to search for RefWorks itself, um, then click Add. Um, and this is going to add a new panel on the side, which is going to be your citation manager, which is going to allow you to, um, to cite all of the references that you want to do. What you want to do is then go back to PubMed, and for each paper that you add, um, and each paper you want to write and citate, what you want to do is to, um, to save it as a citation. So I'll just show you how to do that right now. So let's say I really wanted to use this, um, this review paper over here. What I'm gonna do is click um, send to. Um, so just quick, to quickly show you guys how I got here again in case you forgot. Um, let's go back to the first page. So let's say, yeah, so let's say I really wanted this paper. I searched for it, I found it. What you wanna do is to click on it straight away and then uh, go to send to and then click citation manager. Uh, and then click create file. What you want to do is to make a new folder for all of your citations, for all these citation files. Um, don't worry if it's making, it's not making much sense now, it will make sense eventually. Uh, so go back to your essay file. Um, that's the folder that we made earlier on. You want to make a new folder called uh, citations and then uh, save all of your citations here. Um, so because we named the first paper number one, we're gonna call this number one as well. What you wanna do after this is to go back to your RefWorks in the actual website. And what you wanna click off that is import. So click import in the bottom right over there as I did. You wanna then uh, choose the file that you just saved. So go back to where it was saved. So citations number one. Um, make sure that it's onto uh, PubMed and that's onto PubMed as well and then click import. What this is gonna do is it's gonna download and import the reference and reference it exactly as it should be so you don't have to do anything after that. And then click view last imported folder. And this right here is the citation that we just um, imported. So as you can see, there's a title, there's all of the authors, uh, the source as well, and pretty much all the information that you need to know when referencing um, a paper. What you wanna do now is to go back to your Microsoft Word and then find it um, exactly where it should be. Um, so it should just pop up right here at the top as mine did over here. And then you wanna go to where you wanna add the citation and then click Quick Cite. So as you can see, um, it's generating a citation. So it's added the number here for you uh, of exactly where, um, where, what the citation is. And then down in the references below, it's added it uh, to your reference list. Um, so, you know, so you kind of have to go back and forth and do this for every single paper that you cite. But um, what you'll find later, you cite multiple sentences for the same paper. Um, so now that I have this already um, saved as a citation, let's say I wrote something else in the next page. So let's say I wrote a different sentence just, um, just over here. You can go straight back to this area here click quick cite and it'll cite that sentence for you. So once you've saved one citation, you can reuse it constantly. You don't have to keep going back and forth, but you do have to do this for every new paper that you find. And yes, it can be time consuming. Um, in my dissertation in my final year in biomedical science, it took me hours to get my citations right because I had over a hundred citations. Um, but once you get this done for a 3000 word essay, it shouldn't be too bad and uh, you should be able to do it in, in no time, hopefully. So that is pretty much it guys. I wanna show you guys and to give you guys a feel about how I like to do my essays. So I've taken you guys through how I do the research, how I then use the research to write the information um, itself onto my essay. And then finally, how I um, reference all of this and complete the essay. Um, so I really hope this has been informative for you guys. I know it's a bit confusing. Try it out for yourself. You kind of have to do it yourself to get an idea of what it's like. Um, if you have any questions at all, please let me know down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Maybe make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful as well. Uh, good luck on your essay and I'll see you guys in the next one.